Welcome back to the sixth episode of Bodies, Barbells and Bagels. Hello, Jazzy, Sean McLean. What is up? What is up? It has been a long time. Jesus. I have finally got my voice back. Yeah. Sean is feeling like... Less pneumonia-ish. Like a human being. And we just want to say a massive apology to this big delay. It will not happen again unless we are hospitalized, sick, dying, whatever it may be. But we are going to pre-record podcasts in case of this situation again. But unfortunately, we had a few things come up health-wise. I was off at the Arnold Classic. We were meant to record the podcast before I left, but Sean's had pneumonia. And then when I got back, I got sick and lost my voice. So we've had a lovely run Mm. of health. And we both kind of got flu at the moment as well. So yes, we apologise. This is not your fault. I know you guys missed us. So what we're going to try to do this week is get this podcast out um, tomorrow. So today's Monday we're recording this. We couldn't do it on the weekend because I had no voice. I ran a seminar Saturday Mm. and then I still sound a bit mannish, but um, that wasn't going to happen. Lovely. So, I'll get it out tomorrow. So, you won't know who's talking because it's like we're both going a bit mannish. <laughs> I know. So, we'll get it out tomorrow for you and then we're going to get another episode up next Monday. So, you're going to kind of get two in the course of a week. Yeah. That is our promise to you. But today, we're going to get straight into it um, and we're going to be talking about fat loss today. Yeah. Why not? So, so, why are we talking about fat loss? Well, who, who wants to be fat? Plain and simple. <laughs> you know. Oh, some people do, I suppose. There's those chubby, uh, chubby women that they're going to say chubby chasers. Chubby, well, there are chubby chasers. There's people that feed people because they're chubby chasers. I'm a feeder. Hey, oh, maybe you're a chubby chaser. Maybe I did fatten you up when we got Closet, to. Our... Yeah, I got to 105 kilos. Bearing in mind, I'm five foot nine on a good day. Yeah, when we first met, I would just bake Sean cakes and cookies and things all the yeah, time. Yeah, I had veins and abs and... You were prepping I was shredded. when I met you. I literally just stepped on stage because I was lean enough. Look, I like a little more cushion for pushing. No, no, no. No, no, no. Everyone said that, actually. No, you say I squash you. Uh, okay, back to the topic um, of fat loss. We're talking about loss? this because it's probably the most commonly asked question. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. people beat around the bush. I love it when I get a client inquiry and they go... Um, I just want to work on getting some results. And I said, oh, what? what's the result you want? And they're like, oh, you know, to feel a bit healthier. And I go, okay, so we're just going to work yeah. on eating healthy food and drink training. More, yeah, more water. And then yeah. when I get down to it, they're like, oh, no, I want to lose 10 kilos. Yeah. So I think people get confused between health and fat loss. Because to be honest, getting super low body fat is not healthy. Ugh, you feel like shit. And I think that's clear that we want to say that in this podcast. Like, we are talking about fat loss tips for, I would say, more lifestyle clients today. And anyone just generally wanting to drop a few kilos, drop a bit of body fat, you can apply this in a more aggressive sense. But obviously, you would need to be more strict on these things. Yeah. So these things um, are general tips and advice, our top 10 tips for fat loss today mm. um, for anyone, male, female, dog, cat, whatever, our dog Buffy needs yeah, to go on a bit Buffy, of a diet. Buffy's seven and a half kilos now. <laughs> she's 7.8. And like, she normally hangs around six and a half. So yeah, she she's was got 1. a kilo. 1.9 when I got her. You work that out. That's a good 20% body that, I mean, body weight she's gone up. So. Yeah. Well, come on, Jabba. You know, 1.2 kilos and someone doesn't sound like a lot. But when yeah. you're only... Yeah, I shit that every morning. <laughs> so. so we're putting Buffy on a diet. Yeah. One of Buffy's big problems is portion control That's and um, also snacking. So yeah. we're going to be chatting about some of these things today. So can you, can you put on weight from eating your own bum hole? Because that's sure. pretty much what, that's what she does all day long. So maybe that's it. We'll stop I'm her. probably not. Probably not. Leave that in. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> okay. Right. Let's get into it. So for him tip for the week. All right. Uh, I want to talk about, I, I would say... One of my pet peeves is the term hard gainer. You know, like if you. Like a hard boner? Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's not a pet peeve. Oh, okay. You know, it's just a, it's an all day long nuisance for me. Um, but yeah, hard gainer. Hate that term. You're just a lazy eater. Plain and simple. Like I would have said that years ago, I'd say that I was a hard gainer. Um, because I was skinny as fuck. I think it's how like people say that your somatotypes yeah. that are a somatotype, not really because they change. Yeah, I, well, if you look at me when I was twenty four, you would have been typical. And I, I was very ectomorph. I was twenty four, so I was a fully grown adult, 
Um, so I maybe have... if like Danley England stopped calling himself Team yeah, Ecto, you might get some games. Eat some more food, Dan. <laughs> then you'd be Team Let Mizzou. me do your diet. <laughs> Let me put you on, you know, Team McDonald's. <laughs> team Miso. <laughs> team Miso, yeah. Well, I'd say I'm a sort of Miso now. Why don't we just explain for anyone that doesn't know what a somatotype is? So yeah. somatotypes, they technically have been studied to a certain extent. They are in your anatomy and physiology books. They do talk about them. We talked about a uni. Still kind of works. But they're kind of debated. So yeah. ectomorphs are typically skinny, hard gainers, like Sean was saying. Straight up and down. Some, um, then you've got your mesomorphs, who is probably more what I have probably been my whole life. Yeah. Um, where you're quite athletic. You gain muscle, but you also usually gain a little bit of fat. Um, and then you've got your endomorphs. Endos. So who are your typical people that are easy weight gainers Solid. of body fat. And they tend to also be a little bit of muscle, but tend to be more inclined to higher body fat levels and harder to probably drop body fat. Yeah. But again, like we've said, these are not something set in stone. No. Um, it's based on your lifestyle and it's based on your choices and they can be changed. So sure, there is some people, I think it's more like faster and slower metabolisms than yeah. anything. Um, because I've got some super skinny clients and most of my skinny clients have really fast metabolisms. Yeah. And they see it as a nuisance sometimes. And I yeah. think that's what, that's, that's what it is. Hard so you gain, get into it. Sorry. I'm, hard gain I'm is, getting away. Yeah, you shush. Yeah, sorry. You shush our mouth. Um, hard gain, they see it as a nuisance. Whereas, you know, when I was gaining... To eat. Yeah, man, you've got to eat and you've got to eat like a motherfucker. When I was at uni, uh, the reason why I was a hard gainer, even though I didn't really train, um, was because I lived on soup. And you didn't train, exactly didn't what train. you yeah, said. Exactly. Yeah. You know, my training was gymnastics and cricket. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get gains you know, from there's that. There's so many, you know, so many gains from cricket. Um, yeah, I used to live on soup, uh, boiling a bag, fish. and What? Like, boiling a bag. <laughs> what is that? Uh, you know the bird's eye frozen fish in a bag and it's got like a butter sauce. Yeah, we don't call it a boil in a bag boil in Australia. Bag. We call, call it, it steam fresh. Steam fresh. Oh, well, we call it a boil in a bag. Not when you say bag. that quickly, it sounds really boil weird. Boil in a bag. <laughs> So he means those steam fresh fish Steam fresh batteries. fish things, yeah. you know. Or you pop it in a pot of water and it boils and so blah, blah, blah. So he basically lived on fish and soup. Fish and soup. <laughs> and he thought it was going to be gay Fish and a rice that. cake. No, well, that's it. Please, anyone listening, go and Google fish and a rice cake and a rice on YouTube cake. and you'll never <laughs> want a body build. Or rice and a fish cake. That one's yeah. funny as well. Um, yeah. I like the remix person. Yeah. yeah. So, hard gainer. I don't think there's such a thing. I think, like, when I was eating soup and fish, yeah, I wouldn't gain any bloody weight. Uh, good when I was boxing um, because I was 55 kilos and I would make weight very easily but as soon as I started eating I started gaining weight and not, oh, not just that. eating oh. um, when I was on the ships I'd eat eight to 10,000 calories a day because I was on the buffet all day long and I put on decent amounts of muscle like 20 kilos in a year naturally so, naturally exactly yeah well you can't get any steroids on a ship um so yeah <laughs> I, dock in Mexico. My, yeah, well, that's it. actually it's very true yeah. <laughs> we used to get off the ship and there was a pharmacy right there and all of the um spargos used to buy um clenbuterol so, <laughs> oh, yeah lovely. literally on the shelf you can see some clen and i had no idea what it was all the anyone that's saying that's an illegal drug it's a very bad drug <laughs> yeah. yeah very bad for your heart um yeah they would all be like oh you just bought some clenbuterol you know i've got to double my dose this week it's like yeah you probably shouldn't it's really bad for your heart um but yeah, so hard gainer, don't believe in it. You need to track your calories. If you're not gaining weight, eat more bloody food. I would say that I can get up to four and a half thousand calories and stick to about 90 to 92 kilos. So if I'm a hard gainer, that means, do you know what? I have to eat more food. What was I? I was on six and a half thousand calories when we I was over 100 I kilos. Eat fat. So six and a half thousand calories. That's. You know, and there's loads of people that can eat six and a half thousand calories. I've got some of my girls who eat like over three thousand calories yeah. in their off seasons and, and stay looking. Decent. And then I get guys email me that are eating two thousand calories and they're full and they're yeah. wondering why they're not gaining muscle. And it's like because my females are eating more than you. Yeah. I eat the peas and the carrots. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think, like, obviously on this topic, like with your males that come to you that are typical hard gainers in yeah. their opinion. I love those people. What are the basic tips that, I mean, around training? Another thing is if they're someone that's under eating and they're training a lot because they think that's going to be the thing that gets them the gains, they yeah. might be over training and under eating and they're not allowing themselves to grow. In I, Off season wise, when I can't put on any more weight, I train less. You know, like I'll either shorten my sessions, uh, make sure the intensity's there, but I'll do four sessions a week, sometimes even three. Mm. Um, I remember reading Dorian Yates doing it, massive bodybuilder. He said train for three or four days a week, but train properly. 
And it works because yeah. I think too many people try and chase hypertrophy, whereas really you want to be chasing recovery. As long as you get some form of stimulus to gain muscle, you've just got to eat more yeah. to get bigger. Yeah. You know? um, I would say the, the secrets to it is don't be afraid of fats. Fats are something that will just not fill you up. As like, If you try and eat five kilos of rice a day um, and super, super clean food, then you're just going to struggle. You're full like shit. Yeah, throw some peanut butter in, throw yeah. some olive oil in, Oils and, coconut. Oils you and know, nuts and avocado. I used to eat a kilo of nuts a day. Yeah, I think the biggest mistake when I used to coach a lot more males was that they eat too much protein and they yeah. don't eat enough carbs and fats because they think protein's the thing that gets you gains. Yeah. And it really doesn't. I mean, yeah, well, yeah it helps, it does, but, yeah. but there's only a certain cap to really how much protein yeah. you need before it becomes... Remember, protein really fills you up. So yeah. if you're filling up on protein, shakes, steak, meat, you're not really leaving a lot of room for foods that are easier to digest, such yeah. as carbohydrates, fats, quite easy as well. And once your carbs get up to a certain point, carbs are just as muscle sparing as protein. Yeah. So I drop my protein to one gram per pound of body weight when and, I'm off and, season. And pretty much everything we're saying now is like the opposite of what you do when you're chasing fat. Pretty loss. much, like yeah. You're trying to up your protein to yeah. stay full, reduce your fats because they're high calories. So even though this this podcast is yeah. about fat loss, we're talking the opposite now. That's why I thought I'd throw it in there. A bit of, you know, reverse. So yeah, you're not a hard gainer, you're a lazy eater. Easy. Simple. If you want to know how to eat more, come and see me. Eating's fun. Easy. Yours? God. What's your tip? The hair. I am going to be really honest, and I didn't have one planned this week. Oh, Jesus. I know. I'm well, really, I really disorganised. I suppose that's a tip for him and her. Well, I might do one touching on that. And, yeah, I think that I'll talk specifically for females. I get a lot of girls who come to me, and let's talk more about building muscle. So same sort of topic, but yep. they say, guys will generally say they just want to go up on the scale. So guys like, I just want to, you know, get to 90 or get to 100. Everyone wants to hit 100. Boys have got that goal. Girls don't have that goal <laughs> You ever. don't want to hit 100 kilos? Girls want to, okay, this is the tip. Girls want to put on muscle, but they don't want to see the scales go up. That's true, yeah. It's absolute fact. So I'll get girls come to me and they say, I want to build a booty. I want to build muscle. I want to comp prep. But I can't hit 60 kilos. But I don't want to hit 60 kilos because yeah. that's where I die. What's with 60 kilos I in don't girls? Know. I had that for a little while. Yeah. But anyway. So, I'm gonna so s- did I. Yeah, I'm sure when you I was did. male. <laughs> All right. I'm going to get through this one quickly so we can get into it. <laughs> but um, generally speaking, don't worry about the scales. I think yeah. there's a big difference with guys and girls. If you want to gain muscle as a female, the scales are going to go up. You have to forget about the scales. That has been a big head thing for me mm. over the years. I, Especially now that I'm comp prepping again, I always used to have this scale weight in my head of where I needed to be in a prep. And it wasn't until I got a DEXA done that it was a big wake-up call. And even for Sean, he'd know because he's my coach. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be ready because I keep looking at the scales. And I think it's because when I used to compete, the last time I competed was over four years ago, and I was about 54 kilos on Mm -hmm. stage. I got a DEXA done, and I was around 55 kilos of lean mass. Mm. So Recently? Yeah. 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 So basically, I am like, I can't get on stage with no fat. So, your muscle, (laughs) you're going to be minus one kilo on. on (laughs) Exactly. So, realistically, I'm going to be on stage at like 60 kilos, you know? So, that would still put you at 10. Very low body fat. 10% body fat. Exactly. So, I think that, and that would be, you know, maybe with a little bit of muscle wasting, which is pretty normal in a prep. But I think that that's something, my tip for the girls, like, don't worry about the scales because. I, you know, I'm so happy. I wanted gains. And now that I've got my gains, I'm like, oh, I'm too heavy. Yeah. I'm like, that's stupid because I'm, I'm so happy with my shape now and the muscle I have in certain areas that I didn't have. And I don't look 10 kilos heavier, like visually, like, you know, and I think that's a big thing for girls. And if you want to change your shape, you're going to have to accept the fact that your weight is going to increase and it's not a bad thing. And do you know what? I think, um, I... Me personally, I don't think I look as heavy as I am. And I think that's because when you have a big ass, it makes you very heavy. Like how big, when you see someone's got a big pair of glutes, like Mm. you have a big ass, I have a pretty big ass. um, You see how big that muscle is. Well, it's the biggest, potentially the biggest muscle in the body. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it's you know that's going to add a lot of weight. So if you and if I didn't you used grow to up, have a bum. It, no, exactly. So if you grow, I'd love to know and, how much I put on specifically on my bum over the, the last bum, four yeah. years. Yeah, Do I reckon ultrasound. I reckon I solid like. Two and a half kilos just on my butt. I wonder if you have the measurements somewhere. I do. So my hip measurement when I used to compete, it used to get to 82 centimetres. Jesus. It's 91 at the moment, and I don't want it to drop much below about 85, 86 in this prep. Yeah. So I've probably gained probably really about... Leaner. I've probably gained about four or five centimetres to my butt in that four years. So, And I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but, but that's, that's a muscle. lot on a big circumference, Two and that's muscle. muscle. So yeah. when we're lean, yeah, I think my butt got up to 94. Four of 95 centimetres. So. I always think of things in steak. So if you get like two thick eight ounce steaks, so 220, yeah, 200 grams of steak and stick that on your butt, that's pretty much what you've grown. It's pretty thick. That's a thick old bit and of And this rump. is why I can't fit into any of my clothes anymore. Exactly. And that's another tip for girls. Throw out your clothes that don't fit you anymore. Or wear <laughs> jeggings. Do people still wear jeggings? No. I'm going to bring them back. But what's denim the... leggings. Yeah. That's what they are. Yeah. Or jeans mm. leggings. Yeah. No one ever wore them. Yeah, they did. Jeggings was a massive fad. Yeah, but they were terrible. They were legendary. Do you know anyone cool that wore them? <laughs> Sean McClooney. You never wore no, them. I never wore them. I've never worn a pair of tights in my life. If anyone so. has some jeggings, they can lend Sean. Yeah. All right. I will wear them. All right, so let's, let's get, get into, into it. it. Okay, so we are talking about fat loss. So we're going to go one for one. We've got five tips each. Now, we're going to roll through these quite fast. We don't want it to be a long podcast today. But what we want you guys to do, and this is really important, Mm. is if you really enjoyed any of the tips out of the 10, we want you to email, we want you to comment on iTunes, we want you to spam us on Instagram in the DMs, at McLeany Trained, at Ali Round. And tell us which ones you want us to expand on for the next podcast that we will record this coming weekend. So the most popular one will win and we'll go into depth in it on for a good 45 minutes to an hour. I like your style. All right. So number one, Jazzy, what you got? Uh, Well, number one's a good one because I think everyone will want this in more depth. My number one? Yeah. You're my number one. Um, (laughs) My number one is get your guts right and your digestion working properly. I think that's literally the first thing that I do when I work with new clients. That's um, I go through their diet and I, that they're currently eating. I tally up how much fiber they're eating. Do they have probiotics and prebiotics? Um, how many people do you speak to that? Are like, oh, I get bloated after meals and I'm all, my waist every is always female. Shit. Every female. And do you know what? About half of guys as well. And the first thing by fixing that, one, you'll shit about two or three kilos out. By fixing that. And then you'll poop every day. And how much better do you feel after you poop? Oh, I love it when I get emails from clients. I have had a client, sorry to jump in here. But she was, she won't care about me talking about this. I just won't say her name. But basically she was, and I've had a lot of girls with this, but they get addicted to laxatives. Because they have so many digestive issues that they abuse laxatives. And one of my female clients was abusing them. I've actually had a few actually. Probably about three this year that I've helped with this. And I have managed to wean them off and get them pooping normally and get their bloating issues down, the digestive fix. And I get emails from them and we do poop diaries and all of this stuff. And that's a good feeling as a coach when you get someone pooping properly. Mm. Didn't you talk about the Bristol poop chart or something in previous episodes? Yeah, Yeah, get on that. Is it Bristol poop chart? Yeah, B-R-I-S-T-O-L. Yeah, Bristol as in the city in England. Um, And yeah... Check out what your poop is. If so it's... what are your kind of, I guess, quick top tips on starting to fix gut health? Number one, do you know what? I won't ruin one of yours, so I'll save that. Um, uh, I would say, are you eating enough or too much fiber? Guys, we could go 50-50. They either, like, loads of guys don't eat vegetables, you know. Yeah. Um, I think guys are usually under fiber and girls are usually over, generally. But, but then you'll get like me, you remember I was eating 120 grams of fiber. You a lot of calories. But I was having like four cups of How oats. How many guys and, are on 6,000 calories Yeah, not many. Yeah, so I would say make sure your fiber is decent. Like guys, you should be eating like 40 grams of fiber 40 a day. 40 to 50 a day. 40 to 50 and then every 1,000 calories up from there, you're talking another five grams. So the best way to do that would be to just track your food on my fitness pal for yeah. a day. Have a look at your fiber intake, maybe get an average over three days and then see if you need to up your fiber or I, down. I honestly say that's the without going balls deep in different gut, types of fiber. Gut health, prebiotics, yeah. short chain fatty acids, blah blah blah. 
I would say that's a really good one. Yeah. Get your guts right. Get your fiber out. Get your guts right. And get baby wipes. Because when your guts work, baby wipes make you feel nice and fresh afterwards. That has nothing to do with fat loss, but you will smell like a daisy. Exactly. So Excellent. That's one. Yours? Okay. Mine is tracking. Yeah. I would say this is honestly the most important one. Of course. Well, what I mean by tracking is there are three ways you need to track if you're wanting fat loss. You can't, and I'm, I'm overhearing people say to me, I am trying to lose weight, but, and I, then when I ask them what they're eating, they say, I don't know. How are you trying to lose weight if you don't know what you're eating? Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. When you do your intake forms and then they send you what they eat and it's like, oh, banana, uh, don't really eat here, and then oh, I can change. And, and that's fine if you yeah. it, that's fine if you haven't been trying and you haven't been making changes, but when you say you've been trying... I've tried everything. And then you haven't ever tracked. So yeah. what I mean by tracking is it doesn't need to be, say, on my fitness pal or an app, but you might be following a meal plan, you might be following a diet, following something consistently, whether that be macros, whether that be a food diary, whether that be a meal plan, whatever it may be, because... How, as a coach, can we make a change to someone's diet to improve their fat loss if they're not eating something consistently? And again, like I said, it's not a bad thing if you haven't been tracking, but it's a good time to start if you are um, aiming for fat loss. That's as simple as that. Because what I mean by tracking is you want to plug in what you're currently having. And let's say, for example, you plug your foods in for maybe a three-day average Make sure you get a day of the weekend in there. That's really important as well because sometimes you'll find that your weekend intakes will be a lot higher um, or a lot less for some people. And be very truthful. Yeah. If you have a biscuit or six biscuits, put it in. Write that shit down. Yeah. And then track that for a few days, get an average. You'll get an average energy intake. And then also track whether you have been losing or gaining weight the past few weeks or months. Because if you don't know, and they're the first things I ask clients, what has your weight been doing the last few months? Has it been going up? Has it been going down? Have you changed your food intake the last few months? And if you don't know any of this and you're looking at hiring a coach, I would, it's not, again, it's not a bad thing. It's okay because a lot of people don't know this stuff, but it's going to make the the coach's job a lot easier if you have already kind of quantified some of this for them when you go to them. And it's just going to mean that they can start working with you a lot faster because they won't need to kind of get you to go track for a few days and then check all of that um, stuff out. You've already got the data. So you can go to them and say, look, I've been sitting on consistently 2000 calories for the last few weeks. My weight isn't changing. Help. Cool, because at least then we have a starting point. You need to know what you are intaking. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, I hate macros and I hate tracking. Deal with it because you need to find some form of quantifiability if you want to get a result. It's called yeah. science at the end of the day. Do you hate macros or you do you hate being fat? Yeah, and that's the choice. People need to choose, and I know it sounds harsh, but it's the reality. You, you want to choose your heart in life. And you get two options. You either stay exactly where you are right now, and that might be being uncomfortable, being yeah. overweight, Money. being unhappy, hating looking in the mirror, or do you hate maybe weighing a couple of things out a few times a yeah. day and, and doing that for a couple of months and getting a result and getting your goal body down the line? Like you have a choice in life, so you can decide which way you want to go with it, but don't be the person that bitches and whinges about mm-hmm. not getting a result, but then you don't want to do any of the hard work. You'll get so good at tracking as well. That you right? then won't have to do it for the rest no. of your life. We're not saying you have to track for the rest of your life, but no. if your goal is fat loss, you need to track where you're at right now. And then through at least the first few months, I my clients would generally track for at least three months before we start going into more relaxed yeah. tracking. Um, in my program Breakthrough, they track for a three-month period. They don't track for the first bit. And the end of the program, we've put, we encourage them and get them understanding more relaxed tracking and more intuitive eating patterns but you have to track first to know what you're eating okay so the other form of tracking is tracking your measurements or photos or results i'm not a massive fan of using like those in body scans things like that i'm not going to delve into that today but i would say that you need to track your progress this is another one i hear people say they say i'm not getting results and i say cool are you taking progress photos and they say no the scales are not the be all and end all. So it's really important to track your progress via photos, measurements. I like doing circumferences with my clients. Where waist, do you, yeah, go 
So waist and hip are the easiest two to be consistent with. Um, for the males, I also like chest or shoulders. And for females, I also like belly button line and sometimes a thigh. Um, the easiest way to do that is stand in a stand up straight and place your hand down by the side of your body. Don't bend and then mark that same point at the edge of your hand every week. Yeah. Um, again, measurements are also not the be all and end all. And that's why I like photos to accompany me- measurements. If you can get a DEXA scan done every like six or eight weeks in a fat loss phase, awesome, but not necessary and expensive. Um, they're my best ways of tracking and then also track your training. I won't go into that in too much detail, but make sure you're just tracking what you're doing physically. Like, did you do more or less cardio that week? Did you do more or less sets in the gym? Did you train more or less days? Because your energy output coupled with your energy intake coupled with your progress is going to really be the things that you want to know on a weekly basis or a fortnightly basis whenever you're checking in with yourself or with a coach this is all the stuff that we go through with our clients in obviously a lot more detail but there's some basic tips for you there so tracking number two you pretty much just knocked on one as well which is calories in versus calories out yeah. yeah. So that's a big one. You can't beat energy balance. Like, oh, that's my next one. Yeah, so I won't get into that. <laughs> yeah. My next one is... Uh, so is that basically number three, that one? You are on number three. So I'm on number four, really. What mm-hmm. are you doing? Okay. All right. Um, number three, for me, is enjoy your food. Like, when I what? write... What? It's fat loss. Oh, no, yeah. What's that? Oh, uh, how do you do that? You know, I don't know how you can eat... Clean and healthy all the time. I was saying to Sean before that I had an email from a girl today. So I hope she's listening. So thank you for your email. But I sent out a big email today talking about failure and how failure is okay. And she sent me an email back and she said pretty much, I fail every weekend because I eat pizza and I eat crap and I just love, love food. And I was like, we love food so too. Yeah. So do we. <laughs> We're not, just because somebody gets a result and you, and they have a lean physique it doesn't mean that they like eating clean, healthy, boring food. Yeah. I hate that shit. We love dirty food. I'd love to eat burgers all day, mm. but that's not going to get the result that I want. So what, what do we do? Saying? Well, when I say enjoy your food as well, is it's like eventually if your calories do get low, you do have to get more bro and yeah. a bit less with Me the sauces currently. and stuff. But if you're not on poverty calories, but even if you are, when I was on poverty calories coming from 6,500 down to 2,000 on my prep, I was eating ramen bowls and bulking things out of stock and yeah, you know, just low, low calorie tomato sauces and stuff portion like that. Yeah, control. Smaller portions, portion control. But if you can enjoy your food, regardless of where you are calorically, you'll stick to it so much better. Yeah. And I find that's a big thing that my, especially ones that, um, that's the whole point in doing flexible dieting. Exactly. Is you can, okay, I don't want to eat fucking chicken today, so I'm going to yeah. eat fish, or I'm going to eat lean meat, or I'm going to eat, you know, something completely different. I don't want to eat broccoli and chicken. Yeah, fuck broccoli. Um, so, yeah, enjoy it. Be flexible with your tracking as well, though. Mm. Um, and you'll be so much more successful in the yeah, long run. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that it was interesting. I had a client as well, Beck, shout out Beck, um, who basically said that, She's um, in her late 30s and she has been on diets for the last 15 years before she started Gonzalez. With Gonzalez right. before she started working with me. If you need a, if you need a broker, there you go back. We give yeah. you a plug. She kicks ass. Yeah, she's got to say how. So very good. Anyway, um, on that note, we did get our titles today. So our yeah, we did. slab party will be coming we're soon. Landowners. Yeah, I know. We're building we're a adults. house. We're adulting. You're an adult. I know. I'm not. Shit. All right, we'll get back on track. But yeah. Beck. Um, has a young son, well not young, he's 15, Kai, and basically she said to me, one of the things I love the most about working with you is the fact that I can enjoy a slice of toast with some Nutella on it with my son. She said, I haven't eaten bread in like the last 10 years without severe guilt, without feeling like a failure, without feeling fat, and she's losing weight at the Mm, moment. So simple things like that, simple enjoyments in life. You don't need to not have those things. It's about 150 calories maybe. It's like nothing, you know? And she had that like on a high carb day, bit of bread, bit of Nutella. Like that's how food should be enjoyed. If you want to, you live in Australia, you want to have a Tim Tam, it's like 150 calories. Like I'm sure you can squeeze that into your macros. It's about, you know, 80% quality food and 20% be a little more flexible. That's my rule for my clients. Hit your protein, hit your fiber, hit all those things and then, yeah. One of my favorite things is when you have someone that's, uh, like I have Joel, one of my clients. He um, has come from very, very overweight as a kid. Um, And we do a high carb day or he'll have a free meal or whatever and he's just afraid to eat what 
he deems as bad foods. Yeah, like, it's just bad foods. Yeah, he's like, oh, up. or I'll give him like four and a half thousand calories in one day because I know that his metabolism has gone a bit sluggish and he'll wake up the next day and it'll be like 900 grams lighter. Yeah, my know? mate And he's, way, like, yeah. he's like, oh, how the fuck does that work? You know, mm. And that's cool to see that. Yeah, and I think this bad food stigma has to go. Like, yeah. no, no, it's, no it's just, the thing that I prefer to term it and write this one down is there is no bad food. There is food that is a good choice calorically for where you're at in your goals. Yeah. So is it a good choice? That's what I say to my clients. Is it a good choice? Is it nutrient dense? Is it not nutrient dense? And if it's not nutrient dense, have you already hit the rest of your macros for that day and it's A-OK to have? Yeah. Um, you shouldn't feel guilt around food if it's within your goals. That's yeah. the big one here. So enjoy your food. I say there's no bad foods. There's only bad choices. portion sizes. And choices. And choices. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. All right. The next one, which we did kind of touch on before, is energy requirements. Tip yeah. number four. Your energy requirements. Exactly that. So basically just understand them. I don't think I need to go into too much more detail on this no. one. Um, but basically you need to know what your energy requirements are like and what i mean by that is like i explained before in point number two that's just by tracking and understanding that because you could plug your height and weight and a few variables into some online calculator and it might spit out that you need to be on x amount of calories for fat loss that calculator does not know what you have been on for Mm. the last 5 10 15 20 years of potential bit of metabolic you know down regulation that you've done from all your shitty diets over the years or the opposite you actually are very active and it's underestimating what you should be having for your requirements. And maybe, yeah, you're not gaining muscle or not doing the things that you want. So my biggest thing is know where you're at today rather than worrying about all these online calculators and whatnot. Determine where you're at now, get an understanding of what you're intaking and then create some form of an energy deficit, whether that be through exercise or whether that be through diet. I would do it through diet first and then if you need to, that is then when you add in, you know, cardio or another training day, all those variables. You do your energy deficit through food first, so dropping a few hundred calories off to begin. You can go in a percentage, you can go in, yeah, calories I find a lot easier. Mm. And just know that you need to have an an energy understanding there. If you have no idea what that means. Exactly. Yeah. Secret to fat loss. If you can I always say if you can understand physics maths and chemistry i know it sounds really over the top but you'll be a pro at fat loss absolutely Easy. next one oh and the other one is if you've got no idea go and get a consult with someone yeah. go and chat to a qualified person just to get them to explain it to you and determine a baseline intake that you can start on with all of your variables exactly. taken into consideration so all right my next one um Number I, five. is it I would say um, take your time and be very patient and realistic. Mm -hmm. I think when you get people that come to you and they're like, oh, I've got a wedding in five weeks and I want to lose 15 kilos. (laughs) It's like, okay, so you're going to lose three kilos every single week and I've just met you. Yeah, and you're only 70 kilos. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, I'm only going to train twice a week and one of those training sessions is a pump class and I've got um, you know uh, wedding parties and rehearsal dinners yeah, and cake yeah. tastings cake and things tasting and shit like that it's not realistic you know it's like if you're if you've got a big goal to hit like so this is where it comes back to your number that you need to lose is if you've got a lot of weight to lose it's going to take a long time so do the maths like rough we're, there's a big number out there and that's half a kilo a week and that's at best I think really. that's depending on how big you are mm. But in the long run, because there's always going to be... Like, I've had clients when they come to me and they lose four kilos in the first week. And then six months down the line, they, they're losing 200 grams a week at best. And then there's weeks where they go up and then down and blah, blah, blah. So, and after six months, you do the average. Oh, it's about half a kilo a week. And if you've got some muscle change over there, you might have yep. weeks where you go up, you know? Like, yep. yeah. Oh, like, you're a prime example of this. You can look leaner. And the scales hate me. Yeah, you can look leaner and leaner and leaner, yet your scales just do not change. But in terms of being realistic and taking your time, yeah, like it, the more patient you can be, um, the less despondent you'll get as well. So write down your goals, give yourself a realistic time frame, um, and smash it. And stick yeah. to it. I think also a tip here is 
yeah, give yourself a realistic time frame of what you're committed to do within your lifestyle. Yeah. So what I mean by that is if you still want to go out and you still want to have a few wines on the weekend. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But be real about that and know, hey, I might lose a little bit less weight per week than somebody who isn't doing that. Yeah. And that's okay. So your goal might be over the course of 12 weeks, my goal is going to be four kilos of fat loss. Okay, that would be a great goal for someone who's still having a healthy lifestyle. Let's say they've got a little bit of weight to lose. They might be 80 kilos and they want to drop over the course of, you know, six or 12 months, 10 kilos. But in the first 12 weeks, their goal is four kilos. I think you could realistically do that while still having a social life and all of those things. Now, let's say, for example, you are happy to scrap your social life and you really want to go all in. Let's say you've got some big event, you've got a photo shoot or whatever it is, and that's cool as well. And you're like, no, I'm really dedicated to this. I'm not going to drink for the next eight weeks. And you want to lose that four kilos in eight weeks. Again, that can probably be done as well. And you're committed to maybe going to the gym a day more than that other person. You're committed to maybe doing a little bit of extra cardio. You can get there too. But what we're trying to say is be realistic, okay? You are not going to get the result as fast as someone else if you're not willing to sacrifice some of the things, which again, not a bad thing, but be realistic. That's why comp prep clients get faster results. It's not that they're doing any secret magic or whatever. It's just that they are a little more committed to an end date and goal. Their goal takes precedence over their social life. Yeah. And I think if you... what we don't want with our normal clients. Yeah. Yeah, I want you to have a social life, you know, but it's like, if it's going to, again, if it's going to be every week that you're going out and hitting the piss, then you're just going to fail. Yeah. You're just wasting you know? your time. Yeah. Be realistic. Yeah, absolutely. And even just cut back a little. If you're going out every weekend, then how about going out every second weekend? Yeah. You're still going to get a better result. Change your drinks. Exactly. All right. My next one is don't be a perfectionist. Which me and Sean did argue a little bit about this one because he was like, well, you should be, you know, I'm you a should perfectionist. be. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, because I work with females yeah. and I think it's very different. And I think that females are way too hard on themselves and that's why they fail with fat loss. I think that if you are focusing on fat loss, you need to understand that like Sean's last point, it's going to take time and you need to be patient with it. So there's no point trying to be an uber perfectionist because you'll probably fail at points along the way and that's okay. And you don't want to quit. That's the biggest thing. If you are so focused on getting your diet and your macros absolutely perfect, getting your training absolutely perfect. And then let's say, for example, you get sick and this happens, you get the flu. Me and me, for example, last week. Okay, I couldn't train as hard. I couldn't do my high intensity cardio. I had to change things up, all of that. Now, do you think that I wanted to quit? No, it just means that I couldn't be as much of a perfectionist on that because I had to listen to my body Mm. and understand that that's a part of it. And that's also the same if you slip up and you go over 10 grams of carbs or 10 grams of fat. Let's say you go out to breakfast and you accidentally, you know, you have eggs and avocado and you didn't realize that there was fats in both of those and you had a slice of bread with a bit of butter and then you've gone over your fats for the day and you're like, oh crap, you know, it's not the end of the world. It just means that you need to take a lesson from that and go, oh, I didn't realize how much fat was in that meal. Mm. Okay, next time, yeah, sneaky avocado. Um, yeah, might not have the avocado or I might have it on a day where I've got more fats in my diet, whatever it may be. Just think about every time you have a little mishap as a lesson and don't do it again. I think that's the big one. Don't repeat the same mistakes because you won't make progress. But if you make that mistake once, once even twice, and then you learn from it and you improve the next time, you're going to keep moving forward. But if every time you hit a roadblock or you stuff up or whatever, you quit, that is when people fail at fat loss. So, yeah. Well, I had 10 grams extra fat. I'll just binge. I'm going to have seven blocks of chocolate. Exactly. Fuck it. That's the other one, the fuck it mode. Because being a perfectionist, you will go fuck it mode. You might binge eat, all of those things. You're better off stopping yourself then and there than going completely off the deep end. What's your view on um, if you have, say, two days that are very similar back-to-back macro-wise, you go 10 grams over a fat one day, would you try and go maybe 5 to 10 grams under the next day to level it out? Or is it just like... If it's a comp prep client, then maybe. If it's someone with a clear fat loss goal, maybe. 
But if you it's chip someone, away over a couple of days, would you say? Like take three grams depend, off here, three grams off here. It really depends on what your macros are on. Yeah. Like if someone's on pretty low calories, yeah. I don't really want them chipping away too much. Yeah. Maybe I would go half that amount. Yeah. But to be honest, if it's if I don't think it's a big deal as a coach and it's five or ten grams, I would probably just leave it yeah, and tell grams. them to chill and just like move on. Spend an extra five minutes on the treadmill. <laughs> I really mm-hmm. don't think it's worth stressing over yeah. um, unless you are like, yeah, a week or two out from a show and anything like that but for a lifestyle client again just learn from it go what was it that pushed me over cool let's improve on that the next week i would say put it this way in terms of perfection as well as if you do some basic chemistry and calories and maths um if there's approximately what's well, like seven to eight thousand calories per kilo of fat and you go five grams over of fat which is 45 calories <laughs> Yeah. 45 calories in comparison to 8,000 calories? You're not going to. You're going to yeah. put on what? Two grams. And of I fat. think the other way to think about it with, with this is that if you were someone that, has, say, has only been on this plan or macro plan or whatever for four or five weeks and you were eating way more than this before and you're already on a calorie deficit, do you think that going over a few grams is going to be worse than what you were doing before? Sometimes Absolutely it'd be not. Sometimes it would be good. Yeah, so we probably won't get into that. But. Yeah. I definitely think don't be too hard on yourself. The biggest thing is consistency over perfectionism. So keep moving forward and don't go YOLO when you do hit a roadblock. Yeah. All right, mine. I've got you seven. Is it? Yeah. I, if you're on a long-term fat loss phase, I like to set up a rewards system. Um, I like to say, you're not a dog. Don't reward yourself with food. I like food. Um, Even though you like food, yeah. Um, We won't get into refeeds and stuff like that. But what do you do when you are doing well on your um, cutting and dieting? And I go online shopping. She goes online shopping, exactly. (laughs) Why do you need to go online shopping? Because I don't like going to shopping centers. Yeah. And I like screaming kids. And you're a smaller human now, so you need new clothes. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I buy myself things. Yeah. When I'm doing well, if I've nailed a week, um, because when I'm dieting, I don't really spend money on food. I actually, people say it's expensive to eat healthy and I call bullshit because when I'm, are you eating? I'm not going out as much socially, I'm not buying, I don't really buy coffee out. We work from home. No. We're not people that actually do spend crazy amounts on food a week. I, I, I buy quality food. I probably spend about like 160 100, I spend more on food than Sean a week I've been living on $50 <laughs> for the past how long been on our house budget oh, poverty but yeah. I mean in saying that people will say oh $160 a week is a lot on food and you're like well how many dinners do you go out to how many yeah. coffees and alcohol do you buy I don't buy any of that when I'm dieting yeah. so realistically I like to treat myself with you know Gymshark gets me every time. They bloody do a launch, and Sean knows because he gets these packages that arrive. And yeah, we're very, yeah, we're very friendly with the Indian yeah um, delivery driver. It's like from, Indian South African. Uh, then we have two. We have the one from DHL, and oh, yeah. then we also have the lovely man from Star Trek. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're friend. We're tight with him now. When you work yeah. from home, you get tight with your delivery. Love men. the dogs. So yeah. yeah, rewards, you know, and and set it up. It's Another set- good one. Sorry to interrupt. Is I have had some clients, and I've done this before, where. They book a holiday at the end of a fat loss goal. So let's say your goal is, you know, okay, my treat is going to be this holiday, but I'm going to be committed to, say, not going out and not drinking alcohol for the next six weeks. Um, And then I'm going to go on a beautiful holiday. So not only am I going to have a bang and bod, but I'm also going to have, be really proud of myself that I've achieved that goal. Yep. And that's exactly it. You don't need to reward yourself with food. There's so many other things you can reward, reward yourself with. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't mean you can go on holiday and get fat again. <laughs> you know, you now know how to track your food, so you can learn how to track alcohol and you can learn how to track, you know, Balinese food as well. So find non food related rewards. Exactly. Because that can be a really bad habit, especially if as a child, say, for example, your parents brought you up with like food as a treat. Yeah. It can be kind of ingrained in you, so it's a habit that has to be out trained yeah. by setting a new habit. Do your chores and you'll get dessert. Yeah. And they say it takes what twenty one days to create a habit. So it always changes. Try that. Days. Well I think three, I still stick three to or that. four weeks. Yeah. yeah. I think three or four weeks of something. So maybe set yourself a goal every week and if you achieve that, then Get yourself something nice. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's a good one. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be financial, but it can be, yeah, anything, you know, anything else non-food related. Absolutely. Yeah. What are some other 
<laughs> you know what I do? This is non, this is non, not fitness related, but I, this is work related. I treat myself when I've smashed my workout to an episode of Real Housewives. Well, exactly. It. <laughs> You do as well. Yeah. I can hear it. Fucking I'm like, I'm, I'm like, Sean, don't no, talk to me for the next hour. It's yeah. my show time. You shut my office door. Yeah. So when I've been smashing out work since like 6 a.m. and it's 2 p.m. and I'm having my lunch break, I will watch an hour of TV as my reward and then I'll get back into work. Yep. Yeah. You can do anything like that. Because it clears my brain and I feel like I've already achieved something. So I deserve it. Exactly. Treat yourself. There you go. All right. Next All right. one. Number eight. This is like the most simple one, but... People just don't take it seriously. And I want you to have a good think right now listening to this podcast. How much water have you drunk today? Mm -hmm. If you're listening to this in the morning, how much did you drink yesterday? If you're listening to this at night, how much have you consumed? I've got a water bottle right in front of me now. I have a chamomile tea. Of course you do, Jazzy. Chamomile and honey. Lovely. Which I'd like another one. It was delicious. Wait, okay. Damn it. (laughs) Yeah. If my client Kim is listening to this, how much water have you drunk today, motherfucker? <laughs> Not enough. Not enough. Amanda, Amanda. Coffee doesn't count. Amanda used to struggle to drink like a litre. I remember, yeah, when Mango was prepping. Oh, and she's it. like, I just, I just can't. But water, okay? A few reasons. Water. Water, I find if I haven't drunk enough water, there will be a few things that happen. Number one, I get headaches. Yeah. And then I can't concentrate. And then I make bad food choices, Okay. I will be less productive. And then when I'm less productive at work, I get frustrated, I get annoyed. And it's just a whole vicious cycle. Because when you can't be productive and you can't do things efficiently, how do you feel? You feel pissed off, you feel frustrated, like I just said. And so for me, drinking water helps me be more productive, gives me more energy. Um, The other big one is obviously it helps with training. I definitely find I train better. That's gonna help fat loss because your recovery is gonna be improved. Um, you're not going to be as you know dehydrated and fatigued in your sessions so definitely smashing some water pre-training intra-training all of that post-workout and the other big one is when you are on lower calories sometimes dehydration can be mistaken for hunger so a lot of the time you'll think you're hungry but you're actually just really dehydrated so I definitely find first thing in the morning I try to drink some water before anything else usually water and then a coffee um, and definitely like Sean doesn't really drink water before bed, but I tend to smash a fair bit before to. I go to bed as well. Uh, we drink a lot of water. Yeah, um, I like probably drink about, yeah, you drink about six. I would say I drink more when I'm prepping cause I'm doing more cardio. Yeah. So that's more, You're a sweater. Sweat. I'm a sweater. So I probably drink about five to six liters a day at the moment. And I also have a lot of salt in my diet. So if you have a lot of yeah. salt, you need more water. It's Australia. Yeah. You know, when it's 40 degrees in the it's summer, humid, you'll, but... you'll sweat out a litre overnight. Like, Absolutely. I say the easiest way to get your water up is as soon as you wake up, just smash 500 mils. Yeah. Don't have like a little sippy cup thing. Yeah. You know, hit 500 mils, then have your coffee. And, and then I... you'll go for a massive piss. And I think like going into the actual like um, bit more sciencey on water, water plays so many roles within the body that you forget about that will actually affect fat loss. It actually helps with cellular function. Mm. It helps with hydration within cells, not just within, like, obviously general hydration. Nutrient transport. Absolutely. Like, there's so many benefits to water intake that people forget about. So, go. Next time you pee, check. Is it yellow? If it is, you haven't had enough water. Is it brown? Gross. See how when you go into a public toilet, it's like a brown piss. you say when you have brown piss. When I have a brown piss. No, I don't have a urinary tract infection. Um, no, and there's like a horrible dark brown piss there. It's like, who the fucking hell is... It's probably like a period. Ugh. In a man toilet. <laughs> okay. Man period. A myriad. <laughs> oh shit, my penis is bleeding again. Oh, it must be that time of the month. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. There's a difference between men and women, you know. Okay. Manzies. <laughs> Manzies. Manzies. Anyway, drink enough water. And someone's just got it's some re- anal leakage and pee at the same yeah, time. So. It's very good for your skin as well, drinking enough That's water. the other one. Yeah. No one wants dry skin. Yeah, dry skin. Oh, um, and definitely when you are in a fat loss phase, I find this with a lot of girls, they tend to get more acne breakouts. <coughs> um, a couple of reasons. Probably your fat intake's a little lower. 
Um, you're training more, you're more sweaty if you wear makeup in the gym, which there is nothing wrong with that. Um, but your ch- you'll find that your pores will get a little bit more clogged. So going off topic here, but ladies, wash your faces after you train. I probably wash my face twice a day because um, I have been prone to acne. And definitely since I've drunk a lot more water, that has been improved as well. So if you're going to get your hot body, you might as well get your hot face as well. Yeah. So tip there, water. At least I would say three liters a day if you are training, two on a non-training day. That's the minimum. Yeah, like, like I said, like, unless it's... How cold does it get here in Perth? I always forget. Oh, like, I don't know, 10 or yeah, worse? Yeah, you're still going to sweat. Mm. You know, like, I sweat perpetually, so, because I'm English. When you're in Australia, you, you shouldn't eat any less than yeah. two litres a day. No. And that's, and the, the Australian recommendations are two litres a day, and that's for someone not active. As soon as you train, there's another litre of water. Minimum, yeah. So, if, I would say two to three is your minimum, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, and the bigger the human you are, the more you need. More you need, so. exactly. Why? So, I've got number nine. Um, I would say um, recovery is just as important as your training. Oh, cute little puppies. Um, and what I mean by that is people think that in order to lose weight, you've just got to smash yourself into complete submission. Um, when in fact, really what you want to do is, is get the stimulus and then chase recovery. If your body is recovering better, it's going to work better for you. You know, so if you're getting good food in you uh, and you're having your rest days, don't be afraid of rest days either. Um, then your body is going to work more efficiently than if you just smashed into submission and you felt like shit and you were broken and you're all tight and you're all, oh, I like Um and you're all torn to bits. So, you know, don't be afraid of rest days. Make sure you're recovering. Um, and yeah, I mean, that all ties in with things like water and stuff like that as well. So, I mean, one thing that you wanted to talk about a little bit was stress and awesome. yeah, stress and sleep, which ties into this really. So, um, mine is, yeah, don't be afraid of rest days. Make sure you are recovering properly. Oh, on that, on rest days, has anyone noticed that when they actually have a couple of rest days, they're lighter on the scales? Mm. And this is something important to understand as well. I'm very much like that. Because you've got less inflammation exactly, yeah. and inflammation get, is fluid. If I have a huge leg session, my legs just look like sausage legs. Yeah. And it was funny because I had one of my girls and she's in a fat loss phase and she was sick. So she had a few days off and she probably maybe under a tiny bit clearly. Not really though. She's pretty on with her macros and her weight hadn't been dropping a massive amount. And then she drops one and a half kilos and she's like, oh yay, one and a half kilos. All her measurements were the exact same. Her photos were the exact same. And then the next week, her weight went, I think, back up half a kilo, but all her measurements came mm. down. And she was annoyed. And I was like, Oh, geez. What's your, more important? Your measurements went down. You look visibly leaner. And that was just a bit of fluid. And I said, What did you train the day before you weighed in this week? And she said, Legs. And I went, Well, there we go. Yeah. We got some inflammation. Yeah. A few days later, weight's back down again. So don't be too hell bent on weight and as recovery and training will affect that. Mm. Yeah, so I think that ties into your last one, which is... Stress. Okay, stress is probably the most overlooked variable when it comes to fat loss. Yeah. It's definitely been one that has influenced me a lot personally, which is, I think, why I'm so interested in it. There is actual science behind this. There is science behind stress and the cortisol response on fat loss. Yeah. Um, so I think that it needs to be taken more seriously and stress. I don't just mean stress from like someone annoying you or your job annoying you. There can be internal stress, which again, ties back to the digestive system. So if your guts are stressed out, all of these things, that's going to have an impact. If your heart is stressed, your arteries are clogged, all of these things are going to have an impact on your fat loss. And then also obviously chronic stress would be like mental stress chronically from say a job or a relationship or just you're a stressed person like you're someone that's just like anything stresses you out everything you see is a negative everything is fearful so some of the I guess big qualities that you'll see in your personality if you're someone that is chronically stressed and it has become an issue is that you react very poorly to situations you take everything personally um, you know, you find it hard to get over things, you know, you're fearful for your future. So you're constantly worrying about like what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day or the next week. And you find it hard to just like do daily tasks to finish things. Um, you put too much on your plate and then you get stressed out and you can't finish it. 
all of these things are things that I've done before. Mm. <laughs> That's why I'm saying it. Who hasn't done it? Because it's, yeah, it's taken me a while to get into a place where I wouldn't say I'm a stressed person anymore. And Sean's probably seen a bit of a shift the last yeah. couple of years. I don't even think you use the word stressed anymore. I think you try no. and see it from different uh, points of I view. I don't even like the word busy. <clears throat> I like the word productive. productive yeah. um, I like the word challenged. I yeah. like the word, those sort of words, because your language that you speak creates a huge impact on how oh, you yeah. actually act. How positive or negative you are. Absolutely. So if I say, if Sean says, how's your day been? And I say, oh, so stressful. Oh, like, I don't say that anymore. Yeah. I'll say, look, I've had a tough day. I've had a challenging day. I've had some stuff happen that was unexpected. Mm. And it's kind of maybe thrown me a little bit in terms of my productivity. But if I said, oh, it's made me so stressed. You have a choice to be stressed. Stress, unhappiness, all of these things are a choice. Um, I don't want to get into depression and all of that today. That's for another topic, another topic that's for sure. Into. I'll get my mindset coach on for that one. But um, definitely, like stress has a huge impact because if you're stressed, it rolls onto other areas of fat loss. It will affect your sleep, yeah. number one. If you are stressed and you're thinking about all the things you've got to do the next day when you go to bed, you won't sleep well. That's something that I used to do. Um, especially when I was single, I think it was worse because like I would literally work on my computer till, you know, 11 o'clock and then go to bed and it was straight from the computer, straight to bed. So all Um, I'd be thinking about was what stuff I had to do for my clients next day. You're still wired. Absolutely. So now, um, so some tips that have helped me personally with reducing my stress and cortisol, because I actually got my cortisol tested several times. Um, I've done it with saliva. saliva? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I did blood bloods. Test, yeah. Bloods yeah. you can only really do first thing in the morning and that will only tell you your morning AM cortisol, yeah, it's which is not, it's not, a, it's just not a clear indicator of chronic cortisol. No. So with your AM tested cortisol, mine was always very low, mm. um, which wasn't like a bad thing. It was a little bit too low probably. You you're want it tired to be, when you woke up? Yeah, yeah. So that's one sign that you're always very sluggish when you wake up yeah. in the morning. Um, and then I was very wired in the evening. So like I couldn't sleep, all of that. Um, I'd say I'm still not a massive morning person, but I don't wake up as tired if I get a good night's sleep. And then... Yeah, and in the evening, I go to sleep pretty well now. Sean knows that. I'm out mm. like a light. Hey, you're um, good. You can be mid-conversation. You'll ask me a question, <laughs> and I'm just about to give you the answer. See and ya. Like, yeah. Whereas I used to lay awake for like, you know, an hour or so and really struggle with that. Mm. And that was hard when I was PTing at like 4 a.m. And I think I'd lay in bed thinking about the fact that I've got to get up in three hours to PT clients, which would stress me out more. So I changed my lifestyle. That to- was one big thing that I did when it came to stress. Yeah. Change your lifestyle. I stopped PTing as many early mornings. I changed working as much late at night. Um, change your lifestyle. If you're bitching about something all day long... Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up or, <laughs> Get on with or it. change it. Change it. Change it. You and have you a got, choice. Oh, you've got that friend that bitches about their life and their job oh and their partner. Oh, my God. You know, do you know what? You don't change, be that friend. You can change that. Yeah, don't yeah. be that person. If you don't have that friend, you are probably that friend. You're that friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't have that friend. Yeah, it's because it's you, you dickhead. Yeah, or you've got a really great community and you've kicked those people out of that's it. That's true, yeah. yeah. That's another one. Because I wouldn't say we've got any of those that we hang out with anymore. No, but um, that's the big thing around stress. You can, you can change it, but you have to make a choice. I think people, some people like complaining, and that's another thing. I know some people definitely that... I will talk to you and every time I talk to them, they'll find something in their life to complain about. And I'm like, is it really that bad or do you just want to talk about it? So I think make a choice when it comes to stress. Do you want to be the person? And that was the choice that I made. I didn't want to be the person that constantly said I was stressed. So I made a choice and I made a a constant change. I'm not saying I don't have my days, moments, any of that. I definitely have my times, Mm. probably once a month where I sporadically lose my shit. (laughs) But I'm definitely more in control of the reaction to it and how to get back on track. And don't be a sponge for other people's stress. Absolutely. Yeah, don't don't be one of those people that, and I've definitely been this person, and Sean probably told me off about it because I had a few... A few friendships that were very draining. Darn tootin'. Even clients, you know. Like, our job as a coach is to coach, and I am so there for my girls and my clients, like 110%. I'm all in if you're all in. But at the same time, if I have a client that is emailing me every single week and their check-ins every week, I'm stressed, I'm stressed, I'm stressed, and they're not doing anything about it that I'm actively asking them to try to change, 
then that is something I can't help with. I can only say to you so many times, okay, I want you to try this. I want you to try to create a nighttime routine or I want you to try to start with some lists and some tasking and like, let's get to some daily non-negotiables. These are some of the things that I recommend doing with females. So if you are stressed out, here's a few top tips. Um, start with your daily non-negotiables around your health and fitness. What is so, that? What that basically means is if your health and fitness goals are failing and you're constantly failing and you're getting annoyed because you're stressed out about everything else in your world, but you're still overweight and you're still unhappy, do some daily non-negotiables around your health and fitness. I would say pick four or five. So what that might be is some of the stuff we listed in the podcast, drink three liters of water a day, sleep a minimum of whatever you want to list as your minimum. Eat three serves of protein a day. Eat three serves of vegetables a day. Simple things like that. Move your body. Doesn't mean go to the gym, but move your body. So set some daily non-negotiables. And then you know if you've missed the gym or you've stuffed something up, if you've ticked those off, you've had a win. I think that this goes hand in hand with perfectionists. And if you set your non-negotiables too complicated, too hard, all of that, it'll stress you out even more. So keep things simple. The other big one that I do, um, because I am a you know a bit of a workaholic, as Sean will know, no shit. is that I have stopped stressing myself out with work by creating lists, and I have a list of things that I'll aim to get through in that day, yeah. and I won't make that list too big, and then I've got a list of things that don't need to get done that day, but if I have time and it gets done, that's a bonus. I think you're better at that, is used to try and do... A week's, a week's worth of work in one day and yeah. it's all jumbled up. And then I get stressed oh, out and I won't get anything yeah. done. Yeah. Monday check-ins, Tuesday new plans, Wednesday blah, blah, blah. Absolutely. Thursday, yeah, blah. that's pretty much how my week goes now. So if any of my clients listening, they'll understand that better or client inquiries. But generally, Sunday is my comp client check-ins, Monday is my normal client check-ins, Tuesday is programming, Wednesday is filming content. Thursday is client phone calls and inquiries and Friday is admin. I have meetings with my staff. I do books. I do accounts. And then Saturdays, I'm in the gym with clients. So that's pretty much... And what's Sunday? Sunday is Sean's day. Friday. And I don't reply to anyone on a Sunday besides comp clients. So... And that's when we de-stress. Exactly. What's exactly. a great way of de-stressing? Hugs. Hugs, yeah. Hugs, not drugs. Hugs, not drugs, <laughs> Or nugs. <laughs> Hugs, not nugs. What are you talking about? We haven't had sexual intercourse. We're not married. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I'm waiting for you to put a ring on it. Okay, yeah. Well, you'll be waiting a while. So, I'll be waiting a while, unfortunately. So, is that 10 tips? <laughs> that's 10 tips. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to get out of this yeah, conversation. Yeah, we're stress. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, I think that's the last one. Like, I could talk about stress for a whole podcast. So, yeah. if that is something you want to talk about, I can definitely help you with some strategies that have helped me. Um, but definitely I hope those things talk, um, help you with fat loss. So let's really quickly summarize them. I'll say mine, you say yours. I've deleted so, them. So number one. I deleted them. What was your number one? Uh, fix your guts. Yeah. Number two, track measurements, training, nutrition. Number three. Can't remember. Um, I'm trying to remember yours. You had one. Recovery. No, well, yeah, that's another one. Okay, recovery. recovery. Number four, uh, know your energy requirements. Oh, uh, enjoy your food. Enjoy your food. Number six, don't be a perfectionist. Number seven. Uh, pass. <laughs> Number nine, water and stress. Maybe we got them all. <laughs> I'm showing this one. <laughs> we did ten. I know we did ten. We'll put timestamps up <laughs> and that will have ten. I just like them. He got well, excited. Yeah, I got excited. Okay, do you want to do a little wrap up? Yeah. Well, Have you got anything coming up, Jazzy? Anything you need to tell them? Uh, with regards to what? I don't know. Your coaching, your work. Well, I thought we were going to say we got your holidays. You got your thirtieth birthday. Oh, I'm getting old. Does anyone want me to do a podcast on the top, the thirty things I have learnt at thirty? Oh, that's a good one. Do you like that? Do you want to interview me? Yeah, well, that's not a bad one. Would you like that? If you'd like that. Well, why didn't we do that I've already birthday? started taking notes on that, actually. Have you? Yeah. Oh, well, that'd be a good one. So my birthday is April 29th. My PO box is 511 Scarborough if you'd like to send gifts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah. kidding. Um, anyway. Not kidding. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll do that. Coming up to the dirty 30. Sean's already over 30, so we've got to wait for his 40. That's why I'm dirty already. 
Uh, other than that, I just want to thank all the beautiful women that came to my training camp mm. on Saturday. You did make me lose my voice because you were asking so many awesome questions and we had a really, really great day. So that was a more theory intensive booty day. It was all about the glute anatomy, physiology, biomechanics, so much science. Um, and now I'm going to be running another camp, which is on the 26th of May, and it will be training intensive. So if yeah. you live in Perth, get down for it. I'm actually going to see if Sean can come as well and help because oh. it is more hands-on training. Oh, yeah. um, so if you want to... And I have a big booty. He sure does. So oh, that look. is on the 26th of May. I will leave a link to that down in the show notes. If you want to book and secure a spot, I believe there is five spots left. Jeez. Um, so yeah, it's been busy. We've been busy. It's nice. Been, yeah. We apologize for the delay in podcasts. We're no longer as sick and pneumonia based and you're not in Melbourne anymore. So we're going to get back on top of it. We're going to get one out every Monday. We're going to get two out this week, you said, didn't we? Yeah. So we're going to, this, we're, going to, we're going to post this one up tomorrow. So tell us which stuff you'd like us to expand on. Yeah, get down in the DMs. Because we truly appreciate all of you guys listening to us ramble for an hour every week. And we don't want to lose you because we have skipped a few weeks. So we want to know what you want to listen to. Yeah. And we, we thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. We hope this podcast was informative. If you have any questions, contact us on social media. Shoot us an email. Um, what's your best email address, Shawnee? Sean at McLeanyTrained.com. Easy. Mine is Alice at AliceRound.com or you can go through my website, which is the exact same. So thank you so, so much. Wrap it up. Say goodbye. A good day to you, people. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. We'll see you Monday. So we'll see you in about three days, basically. <laughs> days. All right. See you guys. Ciao.